It's sort of followed, and you can't put an employee in that doesn't have a valid department number. All right? So I'll click Create, and it draws the little one-to-many. We'll talk more about this uh, later. We will come back and do some more of this stuff, so if it's not 100% clear now, we'll, we'll go over some other examples of it. Now, I'm going to close out of this, and I am going to enter some data. I'm going to enter a couple departments. Department 1, we'll make accounting. Department 2, we'll make finance. Department 3, we'll make IT. Okay, so we'll go with those three departments. All right. Notice that I didn't have to enter in the department ID. That was automatically generated, right? Because this is an auto number field. It's a surrogate key. The database keeps track of that. All right. Let me close out of this. And let me go and enter into employee. Now, keep in mind that this is sort of the backdoor way of getting data into this table. Normally, in a real application, you'd have forms to do this. You'd have forms on your website that would allow the entry of a new employee, et cetera. All right. But we just want to get some data in here quick and dirty. So we will go in and we will enter data this way. Now, remember the constraints that I put on this table. I put um, three constraints on this table, if I remember right. I put in the first constraint that says that <coughs> there's a foreign key between department ID and the department table, which means I can't put in an invalid department ID. The valid department IDs are 1, 2, and 3, so I can't put in department 4 for someone. It'll give me an error. That's one of the constraints I put. The second constraint that I put in is I said that everyone has to have a social security number because I made that a required field. So I can't save someone without a social security number. The third constraint associated with this table is that the social security number must be unique because there's a unique index on it. So let's go in and let's try to violate those constraints and see what happens. I'll put in the first person, employee Mike, and I'll go and save it. All right. How do you go and save it? Well, if you switch rows, it will try to save that data. But it's going to blow up because I don't have a Social Security number. All right. Let's go and put in the Social Security number. Let's go in and try to put the department number. Let's put a department number of 88. Well, there is no department 88, and therefore, I can't enter them. So I have to put in a valid value. Now I can go and save that because I've fulfilled all the constraints associated with this table. Now, there's some things I didn't do that I probably should have. I don't think I made name required, and that probably should be required. All right. Joe, will say, is in accounting. And we'll try to put in the same Social Security number for Joe as he did for me. You get a long error message that says, the change in request in the table is not successful because they would create duplicate values in the index primary key or relationship. Change the data in the field of fields that contain a duplicate key, remove the index, or redefine the index to permit duplicate entries. In other words, all it knows is it can't put this guy in because someone else has that social security number. Now, maybe one of them's wrong, right? Maybe I messed up the digits on one. So go and correct the data. Or maybe I misdefined that index and I said, oh, social security numbers can't have duplicates when well it's, well, well, it's not true for social security numbers. It could be true for other index fields, like email. Maybe I originally set that up as a unique index, but then there's a husband and wife that share the same email account or something like that. In which case, I'd have to go back and change the index to allow that. In this case, though, the problem is I entered the data wrong because Joe's social security number, as we all know, is that. All right, and now we can put them in. All right. I want to take this through to semi-completion. All right. So I probably will go a couple minutes over, 
but I want to show how we can then take, because there are some questions in lab, uh, about how we can take data from this database table and connect it to um, our ASP.NET page. Now, again, the due date on the assignment is Tuesday, but if that's problematic, we can push that back. All right, but I do want to kind of give you this in case any of you want to work on this part of it over the weekend. All right, so let's go into our AS, uh, our uh, Visual Studio. In the interest of time, I'm going to use uh, a, I'm going to create a uh, non-empty website. So I'm just going to create a website. That way that will give me the default pages and all that. I don't have to go through the pain of creating that. The pain of creating that. It's so dramatic. Huh? <laughs> Couple more mouse clicks. I don't know if I can bear it. Well, you know, I, I tell my students, Thursday is my Friday. So if I look a little beat down when I come into class Friday, or Thursday, rather, it's because I've gone through the whole week effectively. I have one more class tonight. And then I get to, I was planning, I think, on lounging on the beach this weekend. No, oh, wait a minute, I have a lot of stuff to grade. <laughs> yeah. It'll be there when you're back. If you have a laptop and a power supply. Yeah. <laughs> my, my laptop does have a battery, but yeah, I would say the battery life is about 10 minutes, I think, on it these days. All right, let's go and let's create a new website. And I'll put it on the desktop and I'll call it HR. website and I'll do it in C sharp. Oh and I gotta go and do it again because I changed my mind C sharp. Now we're gonna see in a minute this app data folder. Remember we talked about this before. We said that's a folder that you can put data because there's special permissions on that that can keep people from accessing your data. So I'm going to move my database over to my app data folder. Given that I created it on the desktop. So I'm going to put it in my app data folder. So there it is. And it's not going to show it now, but I can go and click Refresh. And there it knows about that folder, or file rather. I'm going to go to my default page, and I'm going to just go and do a very simple query to pull up everyone in my employee table, you know, both of them, all right? And believe me, we'll go over this many, many times again. So if this seems rushed, don't worry about it. We'll go over it again. All right? And we'll go over a lot of different variations of this and so on. Now, remember from our discussion of the sitemap, we talked about binding, and we talked about that being the first case of binding that we had over the semester. Binding is where you have a data source that is responsible for getting the data. Then we have a visual control, such as the sitemap path or the menu or the tree view, that's responsible for displaying the data. And then we bind them together. So we say, okay, this menu gets its data from this data source. So if we make a change to the data source, then, then the menu changes. Same idea here. We're going to create a data source and we are going to create a visual control, and then we're going to marry them. We're going to bind them together. So 
under data, there is a SQL data source. So we can use that. I'm going to go and drag it onto the page. And I'm going to click configure. Now, because this is the first time that we've done any database uh, stuff in this, I have to make a connection string. All right, I have to make a connection. Ideally, we should only have one connection to this database. And we'll, we'll see where the connection gets put. Probably not today, but we'll see where the information about the connection gets put. But the idea is we only have that in one place. Why? Well, same reason we put everything in one place. If anything changes, we only have to change it in one place. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick from the drop down that I want this database. Click Next. Do I want to save the connection? Yes, yes, yes. I want to save the connection. And I'll call it HR Connection String. Not to be confused with HR Puff and stuff. For those people that remember that. Back from... Oh, never mind. All right. <laughs> Next. Now it's asking us where we want our data from. Now, because we haven't talked about SQL statements, I'm going to let it do the heavy lifting today. I'm going to let it do the work. And I'm going to say, I want everything from the employee table. All right. I can test the little query it came up with. There it shows me my data. And I can click Finish. That's the data source. That's half of our job. Part two of our job is to go in and put the visual display. Because once we pull that data from the database, we can display it a bunch of different ways. So one way to display it is in a grid view. And a grid view is simply a simple table of data from the database. Now with that grid view, one of the things I have to do is I have to choose the data source that I'm going to marry it to. All right. Keep in mind that I could have multiple data sources. I could have two databases that are being accessed here. And I have to say which connection I want to use. So in this case, it's simple. I only have the one. So I can pick that data source. And notice something went right, right? Because it's showing the list of my fields. Hello. When I run this, I will get it's the clipboard guy again. <laughs> okay, I'll be back in a minute. That don't happen often. Somebody click okay. <laughs> I think we all know this step from previous videos. Click. <laughs> yeah, click OK. Go go back and watch just what they say that I was going. <laughs> I think we should enter some extra weird data on there. <laughs> I'm doing something remotely to the class. I'm working on the pictures for my website for the final project wow. and cutting them out. This is easier than doing a GIF image, though. Easier than doing what? Cutting out a GIF image. I'm using crap.
and I just had it change it into a vector, and I'm just, yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe not the version you used. I think they're up to like version 16 now. <laughs> you lost. <laughs> Don't worry, he's had, he, he's had people written in his class. Yes, really? yes, oh, yeah. in his night Java class. He made a whole... The world's longest drum roll, please. If I'd realized that message came up, I would have waited a second and clicked that. <laughs> we were thinking about it. Yeah, I'd say you would have been allowed to, yeah, yeah, just for future reference. Okay. And... our data from our database table. Pretty straightforward. All right, pretty straightforward. Um, the key to this is, you know, besides all the database stuff, that's one batch of knowledge that you need to have. But for the ASP.NET stuff, the key to that is to get this to work, you need two pieces. You need the data piece, you need the visual display piece, and then you need to bind them together. Now we'll talk more about both of those pieces, right? Because this is just like the very first simplest thing that we could probably do with this. So we'll, we'll talk more about the data piece and we'll talk more about the visual display piece, but you're always gonna need both of them and you need to, to merge them together, all right? So something like this is sort of what, if I remember right, you need for the first assignment. You need a list of all the cars or something like that. Uh, if I remember right. Okay, quest, yeah, go ahead. Did you um, drag the, the SQL data source onto the form yep. first and then the other one? It doesn't really matter which order you do it in. Typically you, you do the data source first because then when you create the visual you have to bind it to the data source. But, you know, if you did it the other order, you know, you could always go back and bind it, you know. The order doesn't really matter drastically, but yeah, you got to do both. So we're not doing queries in the first, in this, the first, the homework sense. Well, what does it say? I don't know, it's dark in here. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> Did it say just list all of them? Well, list all of them, yeah. Well, that is a query. Oh, okay, but it's yeah. a thing like, all right. It's not an elaborate query, but yeah, it, it, it is a query. All right. Uh, we'll see you over in lab.